In this tape, we will review the surgical procedure for implanting the AMS 700CX inflatable penile prosthesis using the suprapubic or infrapubic approach. I prefer this method because it involves no blind dissection and it is the technique that is most familiar to me. I believe it is important for surgeons to understand both commonly accepted implantation techniques, infrapubic and scrotal, because anatomical or clinical conditions will sometimes require a choice of approaches. The AMS 700CX provides the advantage of a full girth erection, expanding up to 18 millimeters, combined with a flaccid state of 12 millimeters, and offering a more natural appearance for the patient. The new cylinder design of the AMS 700CX resists aneurysms and also features kink-resistant tubing. The minimal space needed for the AMS 700CX pump also minimizes scrotal pain. We'll go now to the OR for surgery. This program is intended to briefly introduce implantation techniques that will help you enhance your efficiency and success as you implant the AMS 700CX infrapubically. Over 2,000 urologists worldwide have learned the surgical techniques for implanting the prosthesis by the infrapubic or scrotal approaches. For additional surgical information, observe another experienced implanting surgeon and refer to the professional literature. You may obtain additional device-related information by arranging a surgical staff in-service through your AMS implant consultant and by reading the AMS 700CX operating room manual. To begin the surgery, I palpate the symphysis pubis and make a transverse pubic incision to expose the rectus sheath. In a thin person with a small amount of fat, a transverse incision is made over the mid portion of the symphysis. If the patient has excessive fat in the pubic area, then the incision is made at the lower border of the symphysis in order to more easily gain access to the base of the penis. To insert the reservoir, make an incision in the anterior rectus fascia and create a pocket in the prevesical space using blunt dissection. You may attach a tubing passer to the reservoir and route the reservoir tubing through the rectus fascia. The reservoir is then placed under the rectus sheath and into the prevesical or paravesical space. Fill the reservoir with 65 cc's of filling solution and perform a back pressure test. Leaving the syringe attached, I remove my hand from the plunger and observe the syringe for plunger movement from a compressed reservoir. The reservoir pocket may need to be enlarged. Dissection exposes the corpora cavernosa. Buck's fascia is then dissected from the tunica albiginea. I identify the corporotomy sites as far proximally as possible and place stay sutures on either side of the incision sites. Bilateral incisions of two to three centimeters are made in the tunica to expose the cavernous tissue. Dilate both portions of the erectile bodies by using either a dial -a -mes insert or what I'm demonstrating here, a series of progressively larger HEGAR dilators. You may use the seven or eight millimeter dilator to begin with, 
and increase to 12 millimeter HEGAR dilators. When dilating distally, the curve of the dilator is held dorsally and laterally while supporting the penile shaft with your hand. I use a gentle spreading action with a Metzenbaum scissors when dilating under the glands or breaking up fibrotic tissue in any area along the distal aspect of the corpus cavernosum. Next, I dilate proximally by advancing the dilator or the scissors to the ischial tuberosity. The curve of the dilator should follow a diagonal angle downward along the cruce. Once I have completely dilated both erectile bodies, I measure the distal corporal length with the barrel of the furlough cylinder insertion tool. To measure the distal length, I pick a reference point in the incision, position the insertion tool distally, and read the measurement in centimeters from the tip of the instrument to the reference point. After checking the distal measurement with the insertion tool, I insert the tool proximally and measure from the reference point. I add the proximal and distal measurements to determine the length of the cylinder that will fit the patient. I measure both erectile bodies. In most men, the length of both erectile bodies should be the same. If the lengths are different, you may have dilated incompletely. Redilatation of the shorter side should be considered. There are two methods of cylinder and rear extender sizing. Refer to your American Medical Systems OR manual for complete instructions. Sizing method A minimizes the length of the solid portion of the cylinder for the most satisfactory functional result, but allows the tubing sleeve to contact a portion of the expandable shaft of the cylinder. Sizing method B allows the tubing sleeve to exit directly from the corporotomy. Extend the length of the corporotomy if necessary to accomplish sizing method B. After measuring the erectile bodies, you may pre-place the absorbable closing sutures. Once the closing sutures are in place, you may begin to insert the cylinders. Using the furlough cylinder inserter, thread the pulling suture on the cylinder through the eye of a two and a half inch Keith needle. <laughs> 